Hi everyone, I'm Jacqueline Nolas. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about styling your R, your shiny apps. Um, before we begin, just a quick note. So this is gonna be a live interactive experience. We're all gonna be coding and stuff. It's gonna be a great time. I'm gonna cover a lot of stuff. This is also gonna be recorded. Um, slides are gonna be available. So if you um, find yourself lost or things like that, there's gonna be a recording available. Also, um, there is a question area of uh, of um, Zoom, so feel free to ask questions. Uh, I'm going to try and, if their questions are relevant, I'll try and answer them while I'm doing it. Um, but if not, I'll try and answer them closer to the end. So cool. So the activity today is we want to make our shiny apps look good together. So here's the problem with shiny apps, right? If you make a shiny app and you just use the standard shiny, like grays and whites, it's boring. It's not fun. And it could actually make a real difference um, to how well people like your shiny app and how well people use it is like how pretty it looks. So there's a lot of things you can do to make it look more pretty um, and using a cool couple of tools that I'm gonna go through today. So in particular, what we're gonna do today as a group is we're gonna take a, um, a very simple shiny app that I've already made and it's just very basic. It takes some pet data and you type in a name and you can guess whether you, that's a cat name or a dog name. And then it tells you, oh, in this historic pet name data, was that more of a cat name or a dog name? This is all data from like Seattle pet licenses from like 2017. So it'll tell you like Whiskers is much more of a cat name, but it's boring, it's gray, it's hard to use. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna make it look much prettier. We're gonna give it colored buttons. We're gonna give it like panels. We're gonna give it shadows. We're gonna do all these things, custom fonts, a little icon at the top on your tab. We're gonna do all these things. Um, using only a few simple tools, um, but tools that you don't typically learn when you're doing just standard shiny stuff. Um, so we're going to all do this together and have a lot of fun. So before I actually start the live demo, I'm going to talk through some of the techniques we're going to use. But um, before I talk through some of the techniques I got to do, there's one more thing we all have to do first, which is we all need to start our Saturn Cloud resources. So the idea of this is, hey, Saturn Cloud, that, pro that company I'm repping, um, we do a cloud, we're a cloud data science platform, so you can do data science on the cloud. So a nice feature of this, it means is we can all use Saturn Cloud as our shiny interface. So you don't have to like have shiny installed on your laptop or anything like that. We're just gonna use this link and go that way. Um, so this link will help you create a, an account in Saturn Cloud and get set up with this particular workshop. Now that said, a lot of people registered for this more than I was expecting, like a lot of people. So there's a small scenario that we do all take down Saturn Cloud, in which case the code is available directly from GitHub on the bottom, but I'm pretty sure this will work. So here's what you do. You take this, um, this URL, you're gonna go here, you're gonna put it in, and then it'll pop up something like this. Or if you don't have a Saturn Cloud account yet, it'll ask you to make one first, and then it'll pop you up to a page like this. So you're gonna wanna hit create, and that's going to create the like computing environment that you can use Shiny in uh, and our studio. So we're going to be like editing our studio yourselves. So once you're here, this is all set up with Shiny already. It's got like an R installed. It's got our studio installed. It has Shiny installed. So just hit start. And then this is going to take a minute or two to actually get going. So once you hit start, don't worry about it. We're going to go back to the lesson. Um, but by the time we go to use it, it should be good to go. So go ahead follow that URL, hit start on your resource, and do that while I continue to talk. So we're here. And that's, oh, let me put that link, in, goodness, let me put that, you guys all can't copy and paste it, can you? So let me just put that link in the Slack channel, or the Zoom channel, hold on. Um, so here, it's in the chat. Um, there it is. So that's the link you want to use, scld.io short for Saturn Cloud. Okay, cool. So here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use HTML and CSS and a thing called Bootstrap to make our Shiny app look good. So here's a fun fact that took me a while to learn when I was using Shiny way back in the day the first time, which is Shiny apps, they're just websites. Websites, like you think it's, oh, it's R, it's doing all this magic. Like it is doing a lot of magic, but in the end it is still just a website. A website is basically made of three things. It's made of HTML files, which have the content. Like, what are the words? What are the images that are going to be on your website? It has the CSS, which is the styling of your 
um, of your website. So like what fonts, what colors, that's all in your CSS file. And then you have JavaScript, which you use for like all the dynamically changing stuff on your website. We're not gonna worry about that JavaScript stuff today. We're just interested in the HTML and CSS. So if you look over here, if this is like your shiny app and it has like a panel that has words in it, that is represented on the back end by two things, an HTML set of code. And this is saying like, create um, a panel inside the panel's body, we're gonna have this text. So div is like a basic container. So it's like this container is gonna have a body in it and it's gonna have this text. And then the CSS is gonna tell you that something that's called a panel. So if we say class is panel, then the panel is gonna have um, you know, a gray border. The border is gonna be slightly curved, all that kind of stuff. So the HTML is the content, the CSS is the styling. If you look, this is saying that the word panel means all of this stuff. It takes a lot of time to go through and say, a panel is colored like this, and a title is colored like this, and blah, blah, blah. And most people don't want to go through the effort of doing all of that themselves. So they use something called a CSS framework. Bootstrap is a extremely, maybe the most popular used CSS framework. And so what Bootstrap is, is it's just a bunch of these keywords like panel and panel default and blah, blah, blah. It's all these keywords, but they're already defined for you. And a fun fact is Shiny actually already uses Bootstrap. So when you load up a Shiny app and you just use the default RStudio Shiny app, that is already using Bootstrap to do its styling. The downside is, is that Shiny is using Bootstrap 3, which is like eight years old. Um, and we're already onto Bootstrap 5, even 6 is now coming out. Um, but it's easy to get to a newer version. But the point is, is that Shiny is actually already doing the HTML and CSS through Bootstrap. So it's going to be easy for us to change around the HTML like we feel like it and the CSS and we feel like it, all while using that Bootstrap framework as our standard language for the styling of our app. And here's how Shiny actually turns our code into HTML. So when you think of the UI part of your Shiny app, what your UI part is actually doing is it's actually writing HTML. You feel like you're writing R code, but what actually it's doing on the back end is writing HTML um, for that website. So if you use the shiny command title panel and you put your title there, what shiny is doing on the back end is it is using the H2 HTML, which is like big header, um, old faithful geyser data. So all it's doing is converting the string into the HTML that that should look like. Sometimes Shiny does a lot of this automatically for you. So if you're using like the Shiny command sidebar layout, sidebar panel, main panel, it's doing a lot of bootstrappy kind of stuff by making this like, this one is a row with columns. And like, there's like a lot going on there, but at the end of the day, it's still HTML. And sometimes, um, sometimes the, um, the Shiny does basically nothing. So if you use the div command, uh, div in Shiny, it is literally just putting the HTML div. And sometimes Shiny does like literally nothing at all. So if you use the HTML command in Shiny, that is literally just saying, no, literally do no work. Just take that HTML and put it over here. So this is maybe the single most important thing of this entire webinar is that when you're writing Shiny, you're actually writing HTML. It's just Shiny is kind of doing some clever work for you, but you could have just done that all yourself. You could have taken any Shiny app and made one enormous HTML statement and put all of the HTML of your Shiny app in there, and that still would have run as a Shiny app. So when we talk about the bootstrap, if this is like your, you know, if this is your basic default Shiny app, you can start applying those bootstrap rules automatically. So for instance, uh, bootstrap has a class called text danger, which means make the make it like a warning color, make it make the text red. So if I used a div inside of my, my R code, I could have then colored everything inside the div will be that red color. And so if I put this R code in, so I say, I want a div panel, or I want a div container, and I want the class to be text danger, then all of the text inside, in this case, the slider input is going to turn red. So if we know a couple of HTML commands, like div is a generic container, the class in HTML means the styling for it, corresponding to the CSS. And we know that the word text danger is a bootstrap command to make color the text red. We can now already use bootstrap in our styling. But we may have a problem. Maybe we don't want that text to be that exact red. Maybe we want to slightly change what that red looks like. So bslib is a library that helps make the shiny styling much better. So one thing it does is you can upgrade to the latest bootstrap 
by setting the version of your bootstrap to be five, which is just a nice convenient thing to do. But then you can also start changing the meanings of those variables in bootstrap. So for instance, if the word danger meant red in bootstrap, I can in my BS theme say, no, I want danger to mean FFA000 instead. And now that app, instead of having this text be red, be orange. So what this means is we can add CSS styling and in HTML into our Shiny app by using HTML or the, the, the Shiny commands um, and adding classes to them. And then we can adjust the variable meanings if we need to using the BS theme. Um, we can also directly add classes to lots of stuff in Shiny. So for instance, if we have an action button, like here, if I have a button right here in my Shiny app, which is like an action button, the action button has an extra command called class, and I can pass to an extra CSS class. In this case, we, I happen to know that the bootstrap command to make a button a bright color is btn primary, and then that changes the color of the button. Um, I can do other things, like I can use bootstrap to change the layout of my screen. So if instead of having one little column of my input and one big column of my output, I want it split right down the middle, I can use div classes to change the layout as well. So Bootstrap's not just good for styling, but it's actually good for the layout stuff too. And we're going to go into this in the actual interactive example. Um, so even if I don't want to use Bootstrap at all, I can make my own custom CSS styling. So for instance, if I want, I can give my button a custom class. And then I can make a CSS file that I load into Shiny, and then I use that um, within the app file. Or within the app.r, I can load up that custom CSS and use that as well. And eventually, you're writing so much HTML and stuff that you're like, oh my god, I wish I could just write this directly as HTML instead of doing all these div divs and all these silly R commands. Like It's easier just to use um, HTML. And Shiny, again, lets you use this HTML template to just load up an entire HTML file if you want. Which is just to say the road from I only know how to program Shiny through direct R commands to I'm actually uploading my own HTML and CSS. Like there's a whole path you can take there to do that. OK, so that brings us to the interactive point. I saw one person in the um, chat said that their link wasn't working. Um, if you have any more, I don't, if you have any particular questions on how to get the link to work, let me know. But hopefully we've all gotten to something that is like, um, that is like this one. So if you are not on this screen, um, if you have a particular other screen you're on, um, we can try and debug that. But you could also, if you so happen to have R on your laptop, you could also at this point go to that um, the Git repo and just pull it directly yourself if you're having trouble getting it set up. And this is the Git repo. I'll put that in the Slack. OK, so let's pop in. Um, and so here's the here's the uh, the link one more time if you want to get to that application. Um, wait, okay. So when you open up Shiny, you will be brought into. Or when you open up R Studio, you will be brought into um, your R Studio terminal. Um, and in here, you'll see three folders. One is called the Workshop app. This is the app we're going to be using and modifying. It's got two files, the actual app itself, and it's got some helper functions that just have like the ggplot and stuff set up. If you were to run this app, um, your Shiny app should look something like this. It's a pet name guesser. I'm going to put in a name like Whiskers, and I'm going to guess that Whiskers is a cat name. And it's going to tell me, look, there are like over 10 animals in the data that are cats named Whiskers, and apparently there are uh, three dogs named Whiskers. Don't know what's that about. Feels like it's a pretty cat name. But this is the, um, um, this is the, uh, the, um, this is the app. Uh, and we need to make the styling more pretty. So um, what we need to do is we need to uh, do a bunch of stuff to it to make it look like the final version. And so if you go in here, um, there is a second folder called final app. And if you do app.r here and you run this app, um, this is the pretty version. This is the all done version. So even if we don't cover everything or you miss a step or something while we're going through the workshop, you should be able to um, 
use the pretty version. And here we're going to do whiskers. And you can see what this looks like as well. So this is the end state that so you have that already. And then lastly, there are some raw files, like the pictures of that cat and dog and things like that that we're going to use. Um, but for now, we're going to start on the, um, the base app. Uh, here we go. Oops. Also, this is a live coding thing. So I might accidentally do something. Um, like apparently I, I somehow can't stop my own app. I don't know, it's live, things might get a little weird. We're all gonna try our best. Um, so the base app we're all gonna be using is in the workshop folder and it's the app.r. And again, when you run it, it should look like uh, this. Cool. And this is again, the base app, the boring one. So the first thing we need to do is, um, and this is kind of a cheat, but I think that this graph is really not pretty. And the reason why this is a cheat is this has nothing to do with HTML and CSS or anything like that. I'm just gonna put a prettier version of this graph in there. So in our app, you'll notice that it's to make the plot, I'm just using this function. Actually, let me walk through the app real quickly. We have the UI stuff, which is basically just the shiny default of like a sidebar and a main panel. And then the server, it has two buttons, the cat button and the dog button. I have this results variable that stores what button you pressed. And it checks, it takes, it, it, sorry, it stores what button you press and it uses, um, sorry, it doesn't store what button you press. It stores what name you select. And it stores what name you select by taking your name. It fixes it. So if like there's numbers or capitalizations in there, it removes that. If there's nothing left in your name, then that's an error, so that's a null. Otherwise, it's going to say, it's going to do the lookup. The pet type lookup says, OK, given this particular name, what type of pet are typically in the data for that? So the results are what is actually in the data for that particular name. The guess is whether you guessed cat or dog. And I have some observes here so that when you press the cat or dog button, it will update what the guess is. I have, And then I have the plot. So the plot is pretty ugly. If you actually go to the helper functions, the plot is um, is just like a very basic GG plot. And if you have no results, it is literally a blank GG plot. But I made a much prettier one. So if you take the word basic out, you uh, you take the word basic out, and then you run the app, you get this nicer, prettier version. Where if you type in the name, you get like this that's much closer on the cat side. So none of that was any of the stuff we're talking about. I just did that because it makes it look prettier. So the first thing you should do is go ahead and just take the word basic out of this line 50. So just change it from plot value basic to plot value. And then it already does stuff. But none of that has anything to do with what we're talking about today. It's just something you can do to make it look prettier. So once you've done that, the first real thing we're going to do is we're going to use that bslib library. So Shiny has bslib as a dependency. So if you have Shiny installed in your system, you should already have bslib. So what you can do is with any fluid page or any like UI object in Shiny, they all have a theme argument. So what you do is you say theme equals bslib colon colon. So from the bslib library, I'm going to do bs theme. And this is saying, OK, what bootstrap theme version I'm going to use? I'm going to set version is equal to 5. And when I do that, if you'll notice, and I remember the comma, me forgetting commas is going to be a recurring part of this demo. Um, what you're going to see is the app already actually looks slightly different. If you'll notice, the actual outline has changed. The color of the buttons has slightly changed. Um, there's slight changing because the default styling of Bootstrap 3 and the default styling of Bootstrap 5 are slightly different. So just by changing the version, you've already slightly changed things. Um, but another thing I want to do is I want to say, okay, let's get these buttons to be a better color. So one thing I was saying in that, uh, in that presentation is you can change the styling of objects by changing the CSS class. So in Bootstrap, to change the color of a button, you use the BTN for button dash, the style of color you want for that button arguments. So the action button in Shiny takes, you can directly pass it CSS uh, attributes. So I can do class equals btn primary. And what that'll do is that should make the buttons blue. Yeah, it did it. So now those buttons went from being gray to being blue. 
And you'd be like, is that that interesting? But already you are now, if you can add that class to your action button, you are now like, uh, again, 50% of the way to being comfortable with HTML and CSS in your Shiny apps. Because what you've just done is you've applied a CSS class to an object inside of your Shiny UI component. So from here, all we have to do is change what button primary means, or like maybe add more styling in other places. But this is the core idea of it, of I'm going to be applying these CSS attributes to, um, to uh, all the different parts of my app. And if I'm pausing periodically in weird ways, it's just because I'm trying to make sure I keep track of the questions and everything. Um, and so, uh, yes. So I'm going to be trying to check on this. And again, if you are unclear what's going on, the best link in the in the um, in the chat. I'll add it one more time. Is this link will send you to the to Saturn Cloud to create a shine uh, a shiny workspace that you can then continue to do this um, this editing. So this is the second change, and I'll make a text file of the changes I made. So first thing I did was I made the graph pretty. Then I added BS lib, BS theme to switch to bootstrap five. Then I made the buttons primary. But now I'm like, you know what? Those buttons in my final version, those buttons, I don't want them to be blue. I want them to be orange. So what I need to do is I need to change what the primary color means in my app. So primary is a key word in um, Bootstrap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the BS theme. I'm going to say, I want the word primary. Instead of being the fault blue, I want it to be the Saturn Cloud orange, which I happen to have memorized as FF6622. So now when I run the app, what's going to have happened is the buttons are now orange. Um, because the primary color has now changed from being default blue, um, um, it will now change to orange. And so another thing you can do is like, well, I don't like that black text on the orange. I wish that text was white. So not only can I make these button primary, I can also do um, text white is another bootstrap keyword. And so if you're like, Jacqueline, you know a lot of bootstrap keywords. Where do you look these all up? And the answer, and look, there's the white text now, which is great. The answer of where do I look these all up is I Google them. And if you do bootstrap like text color, it will bring you to the get bootstrap docs and it like tells you what every one of these keywords are and it gives you examples of them. One thing you'll want to be careful about is that you're using the correct version. So this is actually um, this is actually bootstrap four. And like I said, we switched to bootstrap five. So I'm going to switch to bootstrap five and now we're on the right docs. So that's just one thing you want to be careful of if you're looking at bootstrap is just keep track of what version you're using. But most of the keywords stay the same, same between versions. So I've now made the buttons orange but by giving them button primary and changing the primary color. And I put white text on them by putting the text white class um, um, and added orange. Or, um, and, a, and I changed the primary color. So the next thing I want to do is, so here's another thing. And this is the thing you will notice as you start to do this a lot, which is Shiny has lots of these helpful built-in um, these built-in uh, CSS kind of, or sorry, like HTML helpers, like this title panel and fluid page and sidebar layout. But like I said in the presentation, these are all just shortcuts to actually doing, um, to seeing what the, you know, actually putting in the HTML yourself. And so like, if I'm running this app, one nice, nice thing you can do is you can actually go see what the HTML is yourself. Um, the easiest way I like to do it is you hit open in browser, and then you can click on, you can right click on anything. And this is true for any website ever. You can right click on it and hit inspect and see what the HTML is that's generating it. So in this case, the word pet guesser is that H2 command, which means it's gonna be a header. And I can actually see what the styling is. Over here is all the CSS that's being applied to it. Um, so this is like an H2, which has a certain margin, blah, blah, blah. And I can also go over here to compute it. And it gives me literally everything of like what color it is, what font size it is and blah, 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 how bold the font is. So you can like actually go into any website and edit around yourself. And so one thing that I don't like and becomes a problem, will become a problem later is this fluid page, sidebar panel, sidebar layout, all of this stuff kind of um, is a bunch of, uh, um, is a bunch of uh, 
shortcuts to just using the HTML yourself. So one thing you can do is I could instead be like, instead of using the one that's like directly um, doing a lot of things for myself, I'm going to use the like more raw versions. So one thing I can do is I can switch to a bootstrap page and that takes away some of the like pre put in HTML for me. Um, and a bootstrap page, and then I'm also going to switch. So instead, um, instead of a title panel, I'm going to just do like a, um, let's do, you know what? I'm actually going to even take out the, um, I'm going to take out the title for now. Instead of the sidebar layout, actually here. And so let me reload the app and show you what that looks like. So now the, um, so the changing the bootstrap page and actually, and taking the title away, it took out, it did two things. One, it took out the title. And two, if you'll notice now this is, there was like some CSS padding and stuff that the fluid page is doing for us. But now like the thing's right on the side on its own, which seems like it's weird, but it's gonna help us later that we get that stuff out of the way. Because instead I can start putting in actual, the actual CSS I want. So instead of the sidebar layout, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a div class equals, um, I'm going to do a class equals container. And so a container in Bootstrap means it has some padding on the side of your screen. It doesn't like put it right on the edges. And then, so that's going to be my div container. And then I'm going to do a div row. And what this is, is a row is a Bootstrap way of like laying out things in a row. Of, like I want a row of material. And on the left side of the row, I'm going to want my inputs. And on the right side, I'm going to want my outputs. So inside that row, I'm going to do div class equals call six. And then inside that column, I'm going to have, so in the row is going to be two columns. One column is going to have the inputs. And then one column is going to have the outputs. And the reason why I'm saying call six is because call six, a row is 12 units long. And so when you say call six, you're saying, I want half of that row. Um, this is a lot of material coming at you. All of this is in the bootstrap docs. So if you have any questions about like, well, how do the grids work? How do you blah, blah, whatever? You can actually go and you can do like layout, grid. And it actually walks through all the stuff about the columns and the different sizes and all that stuff. It's all there in the docs. Um, so cool. So we're here. So now if I do this, if I did it correctly, did I do it correctly? Yeah. So now, because I stopped using like the sidebar layout and things like that, I have no longer I have like the coloring of like the background of this, but I do have it that half of the half of the screen is the input and half of the screen is the output. So another thing I might want to do is I might want to say, um, you know what, I'm going to wrap this all in that. If you look at the actual picture, I have this wrapped in a nice gray background. And so I want to add that nice gray background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do div class equals bg light. I'm going to put, and that's saying this is just a container where everything in the container itself has a lightish gray background. And then when I do that, now you see this part has a nice gray background. So this container has a nice gray background. So the container itself has a gray background. There's white everywhere else. This doesn't look that pretty yet, but what I can also do is like one, maybe I want some padding at the top. So I can do PY5, which is says add some white space before and after this particular object. And so now when I do that, oh wait, I did that the wrong way. Hold on. What did I mess up? Um, it's because well, I don't know. We'll get back to that. I don't know. The padding, oh, maybe this should be MY5. The P and the M have to do things with like whether the space on the outside or the inside. Yeah, see, so now I have some nice white space before and after. So then I can do like PY3. And all of these, this looks like I'm doing some weird like hieroglyphs to know what all of these things are. But the key takeaway of all of this is I'm just adding these different classes that are doing things like adding white space here or adding white space here and things like that. And so this feels like I'm doing, it might seem like I'm doing like this, this, you know, like wild magic that's totally different than what you're used to with Shiny. But all I'm doing is I'm adding these HTML divs and I'm adding these classes, which I just know from years of looking at these docs to know what the different things are. Um, 
so where were we? We were here. So we are starting to have a little bit, we're starting to get closer to our goal. We have the pet name stuff on the left. We have the, um, the input on the right. Um, so we're starting to get closer to what we want. Um, here's the thing that I find that I don't like. Um, a thing that I don't like, if you look at the, um, at this input, I like that the pet name input goes all the way across. And I like having the buttons go all the way across. I think that looks better than like, where were we? I think that looks better than like this where they kind of only go halfway or worse. If you start to get like here, it like does weird things where it doesn't add spacing correctly. So I can also do some stuff to make these look better. So if I want the buttons to be laid out vertically, what I can do is I can, um, I can take these action buttons and there's something in Bootstrap called um, a D grid. And I'm gonna set a gap between them of two. And what the D grid does is it just makes these into a grid of buttons. So again, all I'm adding is I'm just adding some more divs with some more special keywords. And now my buttons are in a nice grid like that. Um, the buttons also now span the whole thing, but I have this weird problem where the input doesn't span the whole thing now. And so this now presents a more tricky problem for us. And this presents a tricky problem because you know, with the action button, I could add a special class to make the button wider. But this text input, if you look at it in Shiny, it doesn't give you the option to add a class or to add any special other inputs. So you can't edit the CSS of the class the, the text input directly. So if I wanted to change something about the styling of, did I, well, I closed it. If I wanted to change something about the styling of, of this part, I can't do that because Shiny doesn't directly let me do it. So I can't just add like a class equals here, but there's a trick, which is, like I said, all of this is just HTML. So if I go in ahead and I inspect this whole object, the thing that Shiny is putting in when I use a text input is it's putting in this div, which has a form group, a Shiny input container. I don't know if I can make this bigger. Um, hold on, let me see if I can make this bigger. Yeah, it has a form group, it has a Shiny input container, it has some stuff in here. Importantly, the ID of the input is name, and that's how Shiny knows that the object here is what corresponds to input dollar sign name, like the actual variable in R. And the label pet name, it also gets from that. But I can take this form group, I can edit it, I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna paste it right here. So I'm gonna do HTML and just put a box of HTML in there. And I don't even care what that HTML looks like. I just literally put the HTML that Shiny would have generated. And then when I run the app, it still works. And this blew my mind the first time I learned that you can do this in Shiny, which is to say, there's no special secret sauce that's happening here that you can't control. Any HTML that Shiny, more or less any HTML that Shiny generates, you can then just paste that HTML directly into your UI component and it will still work. So yeah, like it still has the same problem as before, but now I'm not using a text input anymore. I'm just using raw HTML. And yet this like server stuff all still works. It knows, um, it knows the input dollar sign name and it gets it from the raw HTML I had in the app. And this like, again, blew my mind. Like I can still type in whiskers and it still works. Um, to fix the problem of it not being wide enough, what I'm gonna do here is on this container, the bootstrap command to make something 100% the width you can is just horizontal H100 for horizontal 100. And now when I do that, did I do it wrong? I did it wrong. Maybe I meant, what did I do wrong? Hold on. Maybe, and this happens a lot. Oh, it's because it's height, sorry. It's not horizontal 100, it's width 100 because it's, so horizontal means height. No, H means height, not horizontal. So anyways, that should be W100 for the width. And now the width is the width of this input is the same as the width of the buttons. And so the thing I'm trying to show you here is just that you can 
copy and paste the HTML from your shiny components, put that in, and then that'll still work. So I'm going to stop a second. It looks like I have a question. Um, so there's one question. Is the conversion in primary using the SAS variable? So yes, this BS lib theme, this primary word, that's called a SAS variable or something, S-A-S-S -S -S, or sometimes S-C-S-S. -S -S. And what those are are variables within your CSS. So in any type in the docs, you can actually look up like um, customize. There's all this stuff about like what the different SAS variables are and things like that. That's how you can get what are those keywords like primary and danger. Um, those are all called SAS variables, um, again, or SCSS, or S, yeah, SCSS, depending on the context. Um, cool. So some other, um, some other things that you can do. Um, so let me look at my list just because we have some time. Um, so, okay, so let's talk about actually using custom CSS classes and dynamically styling. So if you look in the final version of the app, it actually colors the word correct a green color. There are more cats than dogs. And if you got it incorrect, it would make it a red color. So what we need is we actually need some dynamic HTML that, that has some special CSS classes. So first, what I want to do is I'm going to add um, an output dollar sign text. And this is going to be the text output for my app. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do render UI. You're probably like, why would I not use render text? Shiny has a built-in way of passing text back to the UI. But the nice thing about using render UI is a render UI object returns actual HTML, which gives you a lot more flexibility about the styling of the HTML you pass back to the UI. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to do um, UI output text. And when I do that, well, so far, nothing's going to show up because I didn't put anything in there. But there's going to be a text object at the bottom of the graph. And so the way I can do that is I'm going to say, um, hold on one moment. I'm going to say, so that results object is the thing that has um, the useful information. So I'm going to say, if, if it's null, that means somehow we didn't pass it the correct uh, we didn't pass it the correct information. So I'm going to say, I'm going to pass return an HTML object that's h3. And h3 is just, if you look, it's just a header. So I'm going to pass it. I'm going to say, um, you know, please select a valid name. Maybe there was like a number in it or something like that. I don't know, messed up. Else if, um, if somehow like there was a name, like it was a valid name, but like it didn't show up in the data. I'm going to say, if it's not finite um, results, and this is the percent of the results. So if it's not finite, I'm going to say h3, um, no pets in the data with that name. And then I'm going to say, if the results type is equal to the guess. So if the actual type of the animal that showed up in the data, like the more popular one, is the same as my guess, if they're the same, the value I want to show is correct. Else, the value is incorrect. And then, in that case, what I'm going to want to pass back is just an HTML. And I'm just going to use glue. And I'm going to, I'm actually just going to directly write to the HTML. H3, and I'm going to say, um, and glue, if you don't know it, glue is a nice um, library for just putting text inside, putting variables inside of your strings. So these brackets here mean that use that variable that I'm talking about. So I'm going to say, um, guess, the thing I guessed is value. So it's going to be either guess is correct or incorrect. And then I'm going to close my h3. And so if I do that, and I type in nothing at the start, it says, please select a valid name. And it's kind of big text because it's h3. And then if I do whiskers, and I guess cats, it's going to now say cats is correct. If I wanted to, um, if I wanted to uh, now style it, so let's say I want the word correct to be styled, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to, I'm going to, and this is where things get a little wild. I'm going to make some custom CSS classes for those those exact colors I want. 
So I'm going to add to my Shiny app a www folder. And a www folder in a Shiny app means these are extra files that get loaded into the app. And then I'm going to make a new text file that I'm going to call site.css. And so this is going to be a CSS file that I'm going to style. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let me just check my notes to make sure I get the names exactly right. Um, I'm going to say, yes, OK, great. I'm going to say the correct value is going to be color 8EA. I'm just, I don't know. I looked these up before the presentation. And the incorrect value is going to be the color um, BF3100. And so what these are, are these are custom CSS classes I made that all they do is they set the font color. So I've now made a site.css file. I need Shiny to know to actually load up that, Shiny, that, um, that CSS file. So what I'm, I'm going to do in my UI, before all the UI stuff, I'm going to add tags head. And so the tags command in Shiny is just, this is an arbitrary HTML object. So like div is a specific one, but like I could have done, I could have done tags dollar sign div. Actually, I don't know if tags dollar sign div is actually works, but these are functionally the same idea of like tags dollar sign something means the HTML command something. And so head in HTML means like some metadata that my website, uh, my website has. So in this case, my particular metadata is going to be, um, and I just want to make sure again, I get that command exactly right. It's going to be, um, Yes. So then in my head, I'm going to do tag dollar sign link. And I'm going to do rel equals style sheet, meaning I'm going to load up a, a sheet of styles. The type is going to be text CSS. And this is actually all just kind of basic, like, I don't know, basic like boilerplate HTML. And the href, the actual file we're going to load is site.css. And I don't need the www part because Shiny removes that. So I'm going to add that to the header. And so when I do that and I run the app, if I type in whiskers, nothing will have happened yet because I didn't tell it that the word correct needs to then have that styling. So then the last step I need to do is I need to go over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add span around the guess. Actually, no, before I add the span, I'm going to say the value style is going to be called. So the styles then are, what did I call it? So if it's correct, I'm going to do the style is going to be correct value. And if it's incorrect, the value style is going to be incorrect value. And so here I'm going to add a span. And a span just means style the text within a line. So the span is going to have the class. And I'll put quotes in it. And I'm going to do um, value style. So load up whatever style is the one I set in a shiny variable. So what this is just doing is it's saying put in custom HTML, but have the class be whatever is loaded from this particular variable. And oh, this should be a dash. This particular variable. And these correspond to the CSS classes I put in my CSS file. So when I do that, now if I do whiskers, now that has the right color. So this is, again, a pretty wild technique you can now use, which is if you want to add a very specific style to something in your app, what you can do is you can make a site.css file for that style. And you can either directly use those styles, like in the class commands here, or you can actually use them in the HTML you pass over here in like your HTML commands. Um, so again, this is a really powerful tool that you now have in your arsenal. Um, so there's a, a bunch more of small steps like this of changing around divs and blah, blah, blah to get closer to that app. But in the interest of time, I want to show two more things because um, they're a little different. So the first thing I want to show is how would you change the font of your app, right? Like what if you want to change the font of everything? Because fonts are a little bit different and weird. And the second thing I want to talk about is what if you want to change like the little icon up here? Because I, I don't know, I love that changing that little icon because I, I don't know, I find it weak to have the icon just be the RStudio logo. So if you want to change the actual, let me get back here. If you want to change the font, we need to do two things. First, we need to load up the font. And two, we need to tell it that everything in our app gets that font. So to load up a font, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Google Fonts. 
So Google Fonts is a nice place you can get lots of free fonts. Um, there are shiny, or there are R packages that can do some of this stuff for you. But in general, I would avoid using R packages that do a lot of the styling stuff for you because like the built-in shiny commands, you'll probably get to a point where like, man, I wish I just directly used um, a particular uh, font instead. So I'm gonna, yeah, I already actually had it open. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the beginning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a font. Um, Actually, I'm going to use Fascinate just so it becomes more obvious. So let's say I'm going to pick Fascinate. So I'm going to pick a font from Google Fonts. No, I'm not going to pick Fascinate. I'm going to pick, um, I'll go with the original one's planning just to make sure it works. So I'm going to do Enter. So I'm going to click on Enter. And then it shows you in Google Fonts all these different font sizes, which are all technically slightly different. And I love them all. So I'm going to select them all. And then once you select them all, you can then click this button, View Selected Families. And then right here, it gives you some custom HTML that you need to add into the head of your website. But this is actually super easy to do in Shiny because like using the same tools I talked about, I'm gonna copy all of these. I'm gonna bring it over here. And then in my head, what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna add HTML, oops, HTML, single quotes, and I'm gonna copy and paste that all in. So this is just, I don't know what this all means. This is just what Google told me to put in there. Um, but this is somehow I can tell if I look in there, um, actually, I think I added extra family. It's gonna put the enter, um, it's gonna load the enter font in all these different weights. And so then if I want that font to be applied to everywhere, the very base object in any HTML website is the body. So if I apply a style to that body, it will then apply to everything inside the body. So I'm gonna do body and I'm gonna do, um, I'm going to make sure I get this exactly right. I'm going to do um, font family. And then I'm going to do two things. I'm going to say enter, which is the name of the font I downloaded. And in the event that somehow it doesn't work loading it for whatever reason, I'm going to tell it to fall back on sans serif as the font. And that's just saying, if you don't have that, just use whatever the default uh, sans serif font is on the um, browser. And so now if I run this, Now, if you can look, the font's actually slightly changed. Now I'm using that Google font, um, which styles it differently. Um, and now I have that a font applied to all of my app. If I wanted to use different fonts for different parts of the app, I could have, instead of just applying it to the body, I could have applied it just to like the incorrect and correct values or whatever classes I want. Um, so again, this is quite powerful. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is those favicons. So those little icons on the top of your browser, I don't know, I just love them. If you want to change those on your app, you have to do two things. One, you need to actually generate the files, like the image files for what they look like um, and, and get those in your app. And then two, you need to add some metadata saying load that instead. By far the best site I've ever found to make your favicons is there something called the real favicon generator. And the real favicon generator is a website where you upload an image and it turns it into the favicon files for you. But there are many websites that do this. Um, so you select an image. I'm not going through all the steps. So you go select an image. Um, actually, no, I will go through all the steps. So here's my image. It's going to look at it. There's a bunch of options. I'm going to ignore them. And then it's going to say, generate your favicons and HTML code. Um, so it's going to then think for a second and do the processing. And it's going to give me two things. One, the actual zip file of all the files to install with all the favicon pictures. And then two, it's going to give me some CS, some HTML to put in the top to make the images work. Sometimes you have to be careful. It adds like a slash when you don't need it. Like sometimes it's a little fickle, but like this should broadly work. So what I'm going to do is I happen to already download some. Those are already in your raw files folder. So I'm going to take all of these. I'm just going to take everything in this folder. And I'm going to move it. And I'm going to move it to the workshop app. And then in particular, the WW folder. So this is all stuff that I want loaded up into the app. And then I'm going to add, again, to my head of the uh, website, I'm going to add the custom HTML. And the custom HTML is going to be something like, um, I think I slightly changed it around, but I just have it written down. So I'm going to make sure this one works. And the custom HTML is going to be something like this. And so when I add this, this is saying use these particular favicon icons, 
icons for my favicon. I don't actually know it's pronounced favicon. Maybe it is. Anyway, and then when I do that and I open it in the browser, what's that? <gasps> There's my little icon, my little guys. Um, I don't know. I really like that a lot. Um, so the favicon is a fun thing you can change. Another fun thing you can change by adding around this metadata stuff is if you ever go to like Twitter or anything, actually, I'm not going to open up Twitter. That feels like a mistake on a webinar. But if you go to Twitter and someone shares just a link to a website on Twitter, Twitter will automatically load an image and a description and all this stuff. You can specify what those are by, again, messing with your um, metadata up here. So that's something called open graph information. And so this is really valuable. If you have like a Twitter website or like a shiny app that you think is going to go viral and you want to like show up in the news feed correctly, you can set the particular open graph metadata, like the OG title, OG whatever, to be the right stuff. So your app shows up the way you want it on um, social media. So that's another nice thing you can change. So that's kind of, I think what we have time for. So let me just kind of show you one more time what the final looks like. And I'll talk through the things we didn't have time to get to. So if you open up the final app and you run that, um, oops, let me open in the browser. And also sometimes it's a little fickle. If you ever get a problem where it looks weird, if you just hit control on F5 and refresh it, it's because Shiny, like it, your browser hasn't updated the CSS correctly. So if you just force it to refresh everything, it'll work. So what did I actually change? I added an image. I added, if you look, there's some more custom CSS to get the images to be circles with borders around them. I added some text here, but all of this is just some extra HTML and CSS that's dialed to the right size. I added some divs to put a border around here, that this gray like block. And then here later on, we made the buttons the right size, the right color, the right fonts. Um, I added an extra div around here to make it like a, a white box with a border and a shadow. Um, but we did most of that stuff. And then we added this, um, we were, did have time to add this, the coloring um, and the right plot and the like description. So all that stuff should be good to go. Really the only thing that we missed was like a little bit of the styling around here and then this top stuff, which is using the same techniques we used for everything else. Um, so before I just get to the Q and A, um, one last thing. So that's what we have time for for the demo today. So a couple of things, what have we learned? Um, one, some key, nope, that was the wrong button. I always press that button because it's yellow. Here, what do we learn? One, BS Lib is a great tool to get you to use Bootstrap, which you can then start using HTML and CSS syntax in your Shiny to actually use commands like div or like HTML div to actually do the styling. And then two, you can edit the CSS yourself either directly or by using um, custom commands in the BS theme. And then lastly, as a bonus, so we got to use Saturn Cloud as like a tool to do this development. But if you actually want to deploy your Shiny app so anyone can use it, um, Saturn Cloud also has the option to do that too. Uh, if you're in the pro plan, so you're, we're all using free accounts right now, or you all are using free accounts with Saturn Cloud right now. But if you're using a pro plan, we have something called a deployment. And with a deployment, you can create something that is continuously running. So instead of like a interactive R studio, you can just have your Shiny run. So like I have a, um, a deployment here that's running. It's using the exact same repo that we use for the demo. And this deployment, when I click the URL, it now um, goes to that same app. So, and in theory, I don't remember if I opened this to the public, but in theory, anyone can have access to this. Um, so you can make shiny apps and host them as well. You can make them a Saturn Cloud and then host them here too, which is kind of nice. Um, okay, and I have included in the slides, which we'll email to you all after the actual steps if you want to set that up as well. Um, and yeah, Saturn Cloud, it's a great tool. Run your code, as you saw. Use a lot of resources, deploy stuff, blah, blah, blah. OK, so thank you guys so much. I'm about to open up questions. And just lastly, if you are interested in more in Saturn Cloud, we have a workshop in two weeks that's going to go more into just getting started with Saturn Cloud.